My name is Robert Sutz. I am an artist. I have been painting pictures and making life masks for over 60 years. I originally started painting portraits. I worked in the advertising business for a while. I painted urban scenes that uh, have been exhibited in a number of galleries throughout the country. Fifteen years ago I decided to uh, work on paintings and life masks uh, centered on the Holocaust because my father lost his whole family in the Holocaust and I felt I wanted to do something that future generations could would remember about this uh, horrid period. What really got me going with the uh, making life masks of Holocaust survivors was listening to a lecture at the Daly Center in Chicago uh, by a Holocaust survivor and that was Leo Schneiderman. It was late at night that we arrived at Auschwitz. When we came in, the minute the gates opened up, we heard screams, barking of dogs, and everything went so fast, left, right, right, left. Men separated from women, children torn from the arms of mothers. My mother ran over to me and grabbed me by the shoulders. And she told me, Libele, I'm not going to see you no more. I was so terribly impressed by his speech and what he had to say that uh, I wanted to contact him. You know, I told him what I was interested in doing, that I wanted to make uh, life masks of uh, Holocaust survivors along with uh, their stories. And he cooperated fully and he introduced me to a, a number of other Holocaust survivors. Please tell me your name. My name is Charles Zabuski. My name is Henry Sontag. My name is Marion Sapir. My name is Magda Willinger. My name is Alex Bars. My name is Anna Koenig. I was born in Poland, in the city. I felt that uh, I would like very much to get an irrefutable likeness of these people, because there are many records, uh, Holocaust records, but there is nothing like what I am doing as far as making a third dimensional uh, life mask that, uh, they, that they could study from different angles and that even blind people could uh, feel the likeness of the, uh, some of these survivors, get an idea exactly what they look like. I feel that it's terribly important to uh, do as many life masks as I can because I did lose a number of survivors that were willing to sit for me and by the time uh, the sitting date came around, uh, they were gone. And I couldn't realize that this is really what has happened. I was dreaming. I couldn't believe myself. That they take like 20,000 Jewish people a day and they kill him. We were crying. We say, how could this happen? How could this come to be so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bodies laying around? I was now alone. Moshe Heller was gone. My father was gone. My mother and my sister had been shot in 1942. So now I was the only survivor of the family. I got started doing uh, video interviews in working with the uh, Spielberg project. And I thought to myself, when, I st when the project is over and on my own, I would like to have uh, to record some of these just unbelievable stories. The most difficult experience during my Holocaust was the Nazi hit my mother over her head when she refused to give me away. Now my life is collections, seems more dream than history.
I hope this never happens again. Thank you. When I started interviewing Holocaust survivors and making their life masks, I could not help but think that uh, so many of these Holocaust survivors remind me of some of these very people that I would see on the train and uh, in the parks and it gave me the feeling that I certainly could illustrate and paint some of these scenes. trying to put myself in a position of the survivor watching some of these atrocious things happening. A man, a camerad for me, he said to me, Schleimi, I have enough. I can't, I can't live more. I said, no, you must uh, you must uh, writing maybe maybe one day is better. Yeah, no, I can't. Uh, is going up from here. Uh, is uh, going of the, the electric. electric. Three, three seconds is dead. And then something terrible happened because little by little in our room in our classrooms. Uh, children would disappear. Another story told to me was uh, of some young children. This one little boy, he remembers, went up to the one of the uh, officers, German officers, and was told by the officer that uh, he could get some ice cream if he would go over to the other uh, soldier that was standing there with the dog. And as he left to go to where he thought he was going to be getting some ice cream, that uh, that same officer that directed him took out his rifle and shot him right in the back. These Holocaust paintings that will be exhibited, uh, none of them will be for sale. And they are certainly scenes that uh, I think they should be kept in an archive for future generations to see and to witness. I want them to be reminded when they see these scenes that these things happened. These horrible things happened and something that we must really not forget.